Chair. Director's chair is the worst <laughs> thing in the world. Okay. Mr. Alden, how do you come up with a theme for, for example, X Men or is it character based? Is it story based? Some some mix of the two? Well, I think ultimately it's character based, you know, or, or you know, with X Men or a lot of these superhero films, it's about an issue or or, or it's it's what they all face, you know, obviously the universal non acceptance theme of, of superheroes or the uh, feeling of the outsiders, and so I think all of these movies have a sort of empathy towards them, and, and um, try to figure out how do I combine the empathy of, for instance, in the world of X Men, but with a superhero esque feel because they are superheroes, and so a sort of a blend of emotions and fanfare, you know, and that's how sort of the the X Men theme itself came about in desperation, of course, because there's always a calendar on the wall and a recording date. <laughs> When did you know that you had, and how much of this is your control, the sound that really has become legendary with respect to the X-Men? I mean, I have to congratulate you for it. Well, if I'm the editor, it's I'm in total control. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, that's, that's not always true, is it? No, no. I mean, Brian and I, Brian gives me a lot of authority on our films and, and, um, and defers to me. And he's a, he's a reactor. He likes to see something I present. And, um, and because we're sort of creating each other's sensibilities over 22 years, I know if I get chills or turned on by something I've done, he's most likely going to react the same way, and if he doesn't, I'll be pissed off, and I'll fight for it, or, or he'll say, hey, you know, uh, that didn't work, or it's, and then we'll, we'll, we'll argue and, and um, change some things, but normally, nine times out of ten, um, he'll respond in the same brain pattern as I do on something. Um, and what was the question? I forgot what it was. <laughs> well, basically, I mean, how much of it, how much control oh, you have? Oh, yeah, so, so I have a know, lot of yeah. control, because basically, I will... I will propose something, and, mm -hmm. and, and for instance, in this film, the big battle, I was not a battle, but um, the war I had was, was resurrecting the theme from X-Men 2 into the new franchise, and um, Brian being very scared, having done Superman, and feeling like we're being too nostalgic again, mm -hmm. and I had to try to make the case that no, the film itself will update the theme, because the film is a darker, more modern movie, and, um, and that theme, because I'm biased, because I wrote it, to me, it was always, to me, would define the franchise and never was able to because it always got deep six to when another composer would come on and so it was really fulfilling for me to resurrect it and give some sort of cohesion between two of the movies um, and so I fought for that and he after we were done he was he was very glad that that, that the, the theme was resurrected and then a lot of fans were happy you know. some aren't but most are happy I was just going to ask and you kind of alluded to it is there any regret on, on your part for you know taking John Williams no, I, I didn't need to work with him because that score is so ingrained. <laughs> yeah, I never even had to refer to any of the scores when I when I when I actually did the theme or, or, or um, uh, alluded to it because it's actually really simple the orchestration of it. And, and actually, by not looking at his his scores, by default, mine would sound a little different. Or Interesting, but um, no, I don't regret using this theme at all. I mean, that. Sounded like you were. No, no. I think in, in general we were sort of uh, Superman was sort of a um, uh, Dan if you do, Dan if you don't kind of movie. Where if we weren't reverential to the seventy right. version, which we think is an awesome thing, we would have been we would have been killed. Um, if, and so we had to sort of be uh, 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 what's the word um, reverential, reverential. Yeah. Um, and we able, we we did that for the next Superman movie, so they didn't have to do that, you know. Um, so they could go off and do some... Yeah. <laughs> I wish you guys got to do more. Wow. That was, uh, no, I only, saw, I only saw the new one recently and I was like in shock. I was like, holy crap. But um, I could talk about an hour about that, but I won't. Oh, but, um, I'm so glad you're saying this, actually. The Red Letter, the red letter Review. And it's like, and what's you, wrong you, with you have no idea how much... You watch that, you, you know. Have, you have no idea how much levity has just been brought to this. Unbelievable. But, um, but no, I mean, actually, I, at the time, that's what made sense. You know, and oh, yeah. we very glad that I... I, I when you're dealing with a character like Magneto, what I'm noticing is with that theme is he's a villain, but you're also 
very sympathetic with him. I know you guys played a clip of that, his speech from the yeah. future past. In the I'm future. always very sympathetic with Bill. Yeah. I, 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 whether it's Kaiser Soze, it's very romantic. Uh, because villains are bad for some reason. Something happened in their past. They were a human being, I guess, and there's something screwed up about them that's maybe, that maybe uh, empathetic. So um, I, it just enriches them and makes them more dimensional. You know? And so uh, whether it's that or um, whether it's Kaiser Soze or Magneto, there's always some something more underneath. Do we think? Do you think that we have gotten to a point with all of this arguably glut of superhero movies and com scores that maybe we're reaching a critical mass? I don't know. I wonder that myself. But I have no idea. You know, so. Yeah. And when I say critical mass, I think I mean let me put a finer point on it. There's almost a toolbox of musical pulls you can use. You know, violin, fast violins for this. Or, yeah, you know what I mean? know it's it's uh, it's those are the tools though. It's it's all about um, Fair enough. Yeah. using those yeah. tools creatively and um, and again the film always gives context to what you write also. So uh, you know, and obviously I, I wonder that same thing about the critical mass and the superhero movies, but then you see something like Marvel's so smart, they they bring this whole crazy thing out, like what the hell is that? This whole this Guardians of the Galaxy thing is so smart because it's just a whole other thing now they can yeah, so. and, and Fox was smart about the resurrecting uh, X Men. Frankly, you know that was. I mean, it, or you know, the Planet of the Apes. Well, okay, other than your own work, do you have a favorite superhero theme? Uh, of course. Oh, well, I thought it was not a superhero. It was like Darth Vader's theme. Well, you get you get a song. Okay, well, how can you get that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.